In this video, we're going to solve uh, a short answer question from a previous midterm. So the question reads, suppose the market for a slice of pizza can be described by the following equations. Demand, and it gives you an equation for quantity demanded, and supply, and it gives you an equation for quantity supplied. So part A is to algebraically solve uh, the equilibrium in the market and graph your results. All right, so let's start working on this. So we know at equilibrium, the quantity demanded equals the quantity supplied. So we can just set these two equations equal to each other. So 2p equals 20 minus 3p. So the left-hand side is uh, the quantity supplied. So this is quantity supplied. Let's make that a little bit more clear. And this is quantity demanded. I guess I reversed the order there, but I think you get the idea. And we're solving for the equilibrium price. So we're just rearranging this. We can move the th minus 3p over. So we have 5p equals 20, or the equilibrium price equals 4. So p star equals 4. Then we can plug this into either our supply or demand curve and, and get the equilibrium quantity. So just looking at the two curves, I'm going to choose to do it uh, with a supply curve. And we know that q star equals 2p equals 8. And then the question asks us to graph our results. We'll put an axis here. We'll label our, our axes. So price on the vertical, quantity on the horizontal. You know, I guess it's in dollars. This is the market for pizza. Supply curve is 2p. Demand curve, again, we don't need to make exactly sure about, um, we don't have to be exactly, you know, precise about you know our intercepts and things like that in this course but it's gonna look something like this and we have this equilibrium quantity of eight if I can just squeeze it in there maybe I'll erase the pizza and just squeeze it in there put the market for pizza at the top and then we have a price of four so now we've done question a Scrolling down, we'll take a look at question B. So it says, suppose a per unit tax is imposed that reduces the number of units bought and sold in the market to five units. What is the size of the tax? Who bears the greater burden of the tax, buyers or sellers? So this is a little bit of a different question that we've seen. Oftentimes we're kind of given the size of the tax and asked what it does, you know, to the, what's the price of buyers, what's the price of sellers, you know, what's the equilibrium quantity with the tax. Now it's saying, this is the, you know, the quantity with the tax. What's the size of the tax? So we th the easiest way to do this, I think, is really draw out what we're trying to find. And so I'll just kind of repeat or redo the, um, the diagram from above, and we can kind of talk about it. So this is your supply curve. This is our demand curve. Our original equilibrium is 8 and 4. And so let's, you know, see what we're talking about here. What we're saying is that the quantity is going to go down to five. So this like Q star star or whatever you want to call it, you know, the quantity after the tax is five. And so what we want is to know the size of this tax wedge between buyers and sellers that get us that gets us this new quantity of five. So we know at the top of this tax wedge is the price the buyers pay, and the bottom is the price the sellers get. And so then, if, if we think about, we just want the length of this, you know, this tax wedge here. So what we can do is we can plug five for the quantity into our demand equation to get this number. We can uh, we can put 5 into our supply equation to get this number, PS and PB is what we're saying. And then we can subtract the two and we can figure out the size of the tax. So let's first figure out PB. So we have the equations line, I just got to scroll up so I can remember the equations, 20 minus 3P. So we know QD equals 20 minus 3P. And we've decided that this tax reduces the quantity sold to five units. So we know this, 
left hand side is 5 and we really got to figure out what this PB is equal to. So 20 equals, oh sorry, 5 equals 20 minus 3 PB. We could move uh, the 3 PB over and the 5 the, over the other side and we'd get 3 PB equals 15. So PB equals 5. So that's what this number up here is equal to, 5. PB is equal to 5. Then we can figure out PS. We know that QS equals 2P, S, because now it's the price the sellers get. We know that this left-hand side is 5, because we're reducing the size of the market to 5. So 5 equals 2 times PS. So PS equals 2.5. And the size of the tax is the difference between the price the buyers pay and the price the sellers get. So the tax is $2.50. So let's just fill that in over here. And we can quickly talk about the incidence of tax as the question asks us to. Let's do it in kind of a separate column here. Incidence of tax for the buyers, PB minus P star equals $1. So they're paying $1 of this tax. Let's erase that and say for sellers, P star minus PS. They used to get $4 every time they sold a pizza or a slice of pizza or whatever it is. Now they only get $2.50, so they're paying $1.50 of the tax. Sellers um, bear greater burden. Bear greater burden. Of the tax. Sorry that I was kind of running out of room here, but hopefully that that helps you understand uh, parts A and B in this question. All right, let's move on to part C. So scrolling down, um, how would this tax influence the efficiency of the market? Draw a graph of your results from B and label cons uh, consumer surplus, producer surplus, tax revenue, and deadweight loss. Okay, so let's just redraw this. I'm gonna go back to a uh, different color, oops, sorry. Let's go back to blue. All right, so if we remember, we're just going to redraw our results that we got from this, uh, from the previous question. You know, originally we had um, a quantity of eight and a price of four dollars for a pizza or a slice of pizza. Then we had this tax that two dollars and fifty cents, which raised the price for buyers. PB equals five dollars, and then PS was equal to uh, two fifty. So they are paying a dollar fifty of the tax. So this is the graph we kind of started off. Uh, we ended with in uh, the previous part of the question. All right, so consumer surplus. So let's choose a color here. Let's choose orange, for instance. So remember, consumer surplus, everything below the demand curve, above the price that the consumers pay. And you can only count the number of, you know, up to the quantity that we actually, you know, exchange. So here's the demand curve. This is the price that consumers pay. PB is the price they pay now. And so this area up here is going to be consumer surplus. Now, producer surplus, everything above the supply curve and below the price the sellers get. Again, you can only count up to a quantity of five since that's the amount that's exchanged on this market. So let's pick a different color, uh, purple for instance. Hopefully we can tell the difference. So this area here is the producer surplus. Next, you know, we're gonna imagine the government uses all their government revenues efficiently, and we're going to label tax revenue. We have a tax of 250 per pizza, and we're selling five of them. 
And so that means our tax revenue is going to be this green area right here. The size of the tax, which is you know the length of this tax wedge, times the quantity we sell, which is 5. So this is tax revenue. And finally, we have this last area. So we, when we had you know, a price of $4 and a quantity of eight, we were maximizing total surplus. Now that we've added this tax, we're kind of stopping some of these trades that used to be mutually beneficial from happening. So I think we've been using Brown and class for it, so let's keep using that. So this area right in here, this triangle, or these two triangles together, however you want to think about it, is going to be the dead weight loss. So now we have this loss of efficiency uh, equal to that dead weight loss. So remember that competitive markets, if all of our assumptions hold, maximize efficiency. Here, the government's being in, becoming involved. They're putting a tax. This is reducing the number of units sold, which is causing this inefficiency in the market, which we're labeling, quote, dead weight loss, end quote.